Every single time we hear about an entrepreneur whose success is due to a singular decision that she made or a solo endeavor that she undertook, it's all hooey, hogwash, lies. As a culture, we pride ourselves on applauding for the founders who show their strength in doing things by themselves. But that's not real. They don't. And it's time to call them out on it, myself included. Welcome back to Why Are We Shouting with me, Jill Salzman, here to help entrepreneurs get down to business. I want to talk to you about small business blunders, ways that entrepreneurs shine, and valuable lessons about growing your biz. This week, we're going to dive into what really happened when I broke into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony back in 1995 to try and meet Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder. I've told the story countless times over the years to any audience that will listen. The story's taken on a life of its own, and it's about time that I set the record straight. I always tell my Eddie Vedder experience in a very specific way. If you haven't seen my TEDx talk from 11.11.11, it's called Why Moms Make the Best Entrepreneurs, and here's one of the stories that I told in it. I'm going to have to take you back to 1995. I was a junior in high school in New Jersey. I was 16, and I was in love with a boy. His name was Eddie. Some of you might know him. He fronts a rock band called Pearl Jam. And uh, at the time, he wasn't really paying very much attention to me. I was doing homework in my room one day, listening to the radio, and on the radio I heard that Eddie Vedder was going to be inducting Neil Young into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's induction ceremony in New York City. And the best part about this was that the whole thing was going to be taking place at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, 20 minutes from where I lived. So, of course, I was going to be heading to the Waldorf, sitting outside, waiting for Eddie to walk by, run up to him with a piece of paper, ask him for his autograph, and tell him we'd be getting married soon. And then about 30 seconds after I had that thought, I picked up the phone. And I called the Waldorf, and I asked to be transferred to the person organizing this event. And to this person who picked up the phone, I said, Hi, my name is Jill. I am an incredible florist. It just so happens that on the night of your event, I'm offering my services at a discount. Are you looking for any extra florists? And this woman giggled at me, and she hung up the phone. So I called her back. Hi, my name is Jill. I am an unbelievable waitress. It just so happens that on the night of your event, I'm offering my services for free. Are you looking for any extra wait staff? And there was no giggle. She hung up the phone. So I called her back. Hi, my name is Jill. I'm an extraordinary reporter. It just so happens that on the night of your event, my my, um, magazine readers would love to read about this. Uh, how do I get in? And she said, fax a press pass request on letterhead, and we'll be happy to consider you. Here's the fax number. Click. And so I stood in my room, holding that fax number, thinking, what is letterhead? I had no idea. So I ran to my parents, and I said, look, it's a matter of love or death. I really need you to help me figure this out. Can you please help me so I can marry Eddie Vedder? And they said, we understand. So my mom sat down with me at our Apple IIc kitchen, computer in our kitchen, and uh, she found some really cute clip art that was a, a zipper that underlined words. So all of a sudden, I became the editor-in-chief of Zip Magazine. And we made some business cards, we made some letterhead, we worded this press pass request. And uh, I, actually, I watched my mom word this press pass request. We faxed it on in, and I went to school the next day and told every single person that I was going to be meeting my future husband in a couple weeks. I get home that same night, and, uh, and my dad said, Jill, there's a fax waiting for you in the fax machine. How could rejection come so fast when you've just told everyone you know that you're going to be meeting Eddie Vedder? Not cool, not cool. So I walked over to the fax machine, I picked up the piece of paper, and I read that I had been granted one press pass to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Score, right? Except I completely freaked out. 
completely freaked out, ran up to my mom, and I said, look, I don't understand. How are we going to get away with this? What do I wear? And she found a really cute black skirt with a zipper on it and a really cute black purse with a zipper on it. And she made me print out some business cards. She threw me into the brown and blue Oldsmobile station wagon, drove me to the Waldorf, and sat outside waiting for me to get kicked out. <laughs> and uh, I walked in. I flashed one of my newly printed business cards, and I was promptly escorted into the press room for the entire night. I got to ask Al Green what it's like to be Al Green. I got to ask the Allman Brothers what it's like being the Allman Brothers. I had no idea who the Allman Brothers were, but I did get to meet Eddie Vedder. He did not agree to marry me that night. In the story, I highlight a lot of my spontaneity. It's the story that launched my love for entrepreneurship. I highlight really good parenting, how my mom helped me lie my way into a global event. And I told the story in the context of why moms make the best entrepreneurs. I still stand by every single word that I said in that talk. But what I didn't highlight is how many people helped me get inside the Waldorf Astoria Hotel that night. It's only with hindsight that I can see how I cultivated a narrative of she did it and you can too, which sounds too individualistic to me now. Yes, I catapulted myself into the mess that was, at its core, teenager hunts for future husband. But here's the more mature version of the story. It was thanks to my father that I had access to a working phone to harass the Waldorf Astoria Hotel operator. It was thanks to Pearl Jam's publicist. I'd called her to ask if I could get tickets to a concert since I was suddenly the editor of the fake Zip magazine. And she belittled me on the phone condescended to me and rudely admonished me for ever referring to Eddie Vedder, and I quote, because the band is called Pearl Jam, not Eddie Vedder. It was so shocking that since then, I've never failed to fact check the folks I call before pitching to them, and I was able to sound a little more professional, like a real reporter in the media room at the Waldorf that night. It was thanks to my cousin Adrian that I figured out what to write on my press pass request. How? She wrote the first draft. She's a brilliant writer who'd worked at Rolling Stone magazine and had interviewed very famous rock bands in her career. In that story, I left out the phone call I made to her to ask for help in drafting a request because, well, it's boring. But it's pretty clutch since I wouldn't have received a press pass, I don't believe, without the strength of her contribution. It was thanks to my mother for becoming my graphic designer wardrobe consultant, and chauffeur to help her kid's dream become a reality. To this day, I don't fully understand why she did it. She wasn't a lax mom. She raised her kids right. But by the time she arrived to the parking lot full of celebrities limo drivers, she was deeply invested in the adventure almost as much as I was. Perhaps it was her desire to become the grandma of Eddie Vedder's offspring? I'll never know. It was thanks to two women behind the table where I checked in for not only handing me the press pass, but guiding me that night to the different areas of the hotel where the media were allowed to wander. In retrospect, I must have looked a little deer in headlights lost to them. Although it wasn't obvious that I was a teenager who'd faked her way into the event, it was thanks to an older reporter who hit on me and grossed my teenage self out that I left the event at a reasonable time and I didn't overstay my unbelievable welcome. Just like the two women behind the media table who helped me in, he helped me right out. It was thanks to a group of high school friends who continued to foster my entrepreneurial bug by half believing my story and believing in me by helping me launch an actual magazine. I couldn't carry on being the editor of the fake Zip magazine that magazine was reserved for future press pass requests so I could get into concerts for free. I let these friends name our new magazine. They called it Cosmic Peas. And we all wrote articles, wrote poetry, drew pictures, created ads, and found a friend whose parents funded our endeavor. We got 100 printed up and marched over to the local corner store in our town to ask if they'd sell it on their shelves for a buck a pop. They agreed. To think now about how our product ended up on the shelves of that dingiest, dirtiest, and tiniest little shop in our town, and how proud I was to have created something that would make money out of a mere idea in my head, 
That pride carried me through the years to the launch of my first company nine years later. Fun fact for you indie rock band fans out there. Heard of a band called the Yeah Yeah Yeahs? Then you might know about their lead singer, Karen O. She was my classmate, one of the writers on the Cosmic Peas magazine staff. And such a wonderful and shy friend that to this day, her fame blows my mind. It really does take a village, particularly when you're pursuing an endeavor that involves other human beings in society. Spoiler alert, they all do. A lot of entrepreneurial stories lift folks' spirits by talking about how they shined due to their brilliance. They were rewarded for all of their hard solo work. But it's never true. There are people who leave indelible marks on you, and they're easy to leave by the wayside when you have to craft a good story to tell. Who are the people that you have to honor for helping you to get where you are right now? Maybe you can take a moment to send them a note of appreciation today. Their silent support is the stuff of success. We couldn't do it without them. Ta-da! Boy, do I have a review for you. Yes, this week I'm going to read to you a review left for me by Pro Speaker titled Consistently Fabulous Podcast. And it says, <clears throat> Every time I listen to Jill Salzman's podcast, I laugh, learn, and level up as an entrepreneur. Jill's stories are entertaining, her insights are wise, and her subject matter is compelling. One of my favorite podcasts, without a doubt. Pro Speaker, I love you too. And no, listeners, this was not left by my mother. If you want to leave a review that I can read on a future episode, go to ratethispodcast.com slash why are we shouting so that you can send me love and then I can send you love and then you can send me love and then I can send you love and then we can just do that all day long. You don't call, you don't write, do both. Call or text me at 708-872-7878 or go to jillsalzman.com slash podcast to record me a message so that I can talk to you in a future episode. Shout out to Amanda, Lindsay, and Aaron for making this podcast with me. And thanks to you for listening. I'll see you next week. <laughs>